Greetings! Today we're going to be talking about waves and their properties. Waves transmit energy through a medium, and they're seen all around us. One example is ocean waves, which we can simulate using this bin of water. If we tilt the bin, we can initiate a wave which travels back and forth across the water. Notice how the wave travels horizontally, whereas the water moves up and down. This is an example of a transverse wave, which is expressed perpendicular to the direction that the wave travels. Another type of wave is a longitudinal wave, and we'll demonstrate it using the slinky. As we pluck the slinky, the longitudinal wave is traveling along the direction the wave is moving, instead of perpendicular to the direction of movement as seen in a transverse wave. The longitudinal wave using a slinky is analogous to a sound wave or acoustic wave moving through a gas. The slinky has areas where the coil is tighter than average. This is an area of compression. The slinky also has areas where the coil is separated more than average. This is rarefaction. The areas of compression and rarefaction are similar to the crests and troughs seen in a transverse wave. Now we're going to try something a little different. This is called a Rubens tube. It was developed in 1904 by Heinrich Rubens. It's constructed using a horizontal cylinder perforated along the top with a row of very small holes. The ends of the tube are fitted with speakers which are used to generate sound waves within the tube. If we connect the tube to a flammable gas and turn it on, the gas which escapes through the perforations in the top of the tube can be ignited, creating a row of diffusion flames. Now watch what happens when we play a sound through the tube. In some areas, the flames get taller. In others, they get shorter. This is because the vibrating speaker generates longitudinal pressure waves in the gas in the tube. In the areas of higher pressure, the gas is forced out faster, resulting in taller flames. These pressure waves are what our ears perceive as sound. This sound has a frequency of 440 hertz, or the musical note, standard A. Now let us discuss the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and the speed of sound with respect to the pressure waves moving through the Rubens tube. Wavelength is the distance over which the wave repeats. Frequency is the number of cycles, or waves per second, otherwise known as hertz. The speed of sound remains constant in our experiment and is the speed that sound moves through a medium. As we increase the pitch or frequency from 440 hertz to 880 hertz, we see the wavelength decrease in size. We are now at a frequency of 880 hertz. Look at the distance between the peaks in the wave. Next, we will decrease the frequency to 440 hertz. Note that the distance between the peaks is increased by a factor of two, illustrating the inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. Now that we've explored some of the fundamentals behind waves and frequency, what else can we do with a Rubens tube? We've seen flames stand at a frequency. What if we drop more sound in a multiplicity? Let's get in a trance, mash up a song, and make, make flames, flames dance. dance.